This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi, and my guest today is Gil Reynolds. And Gil's been on before, but this time he's back to talk about fused glass. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so uh, thrilled to be back again. This is kind of cool. It's kind of like one of those movies where you do the flashback and you keep going back because we're doing reverse <laughs> chronological. I like it. We started with my current sculptures, and now we're going back in glass okay, and stuff. Okay, well, good. Let's talk about glass because I think that... I love it. I love fused glass. Well, it's been quite the evolution. I actually started out in stained glass. Okay. I'd been an art student at the University of Oregon, and I was driving a school bus uh, to uh, pay for college. And I had two kids on the bus that were great musicians, and they needed a guitar player. So I got a student loan, bought a guitar and amplifier, auditioned for the band, got the band gig, but didn't have any money for... Uh, school. So I dropped out of school to play music in a band. And then I found a stained glass shop that was teaching people how to do stained glass. This is in uh, um, 1972. So I went to work for them as an apprentice. And I worked for a year doing stained glass and then went back to college, this time in Monmouth, and was doing uh, art classes and had a teacher that let me do stained glass panels for my art projects. Ooh. And then I started, I went on the road with a band for a year and then came back and started doing stained glass full time. And a lot of the work I did was for the Street of Dreams. So I actually have a slide of one of my early pieces that I studied with a German artist, Ludwig Schaffrath, up at the Pilchuck School, north of Seattle. Okay. Dale Chihuly started that school. Oh, okay. And so, uh, Shafrath had a very uh, linear design, you know, so he, more of a contemporary style. So the first image I brought is actually one of my stained glass panels that was a commission. There we go. This mm. was for uh, Battleground Washington. Ooh. So it's uh, trying to deal with implied space, even though it's a flat panel, you somewhat get the illusion that it's dimensional. You and then the next image is a Street of Greens commission. I actually would do, they'd have a Street of Dreams with 14 homes. I'd have Ooh. glass in like six of them. This wow. is a skylight in a master bathroom. So the next image shows the view. If you're laying in the bathtub and you're looking up at the window, you'll see the, <laughs> uh, the go ahead and do the next slide. And we can see what it's like when you're in the, uh, in the tub and you're looking up. Oh, there, there it we goes. Go. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So the little ripples in the, mm -hmm. uh, the pools, those are etched hydrofluoric acid, and the leaves that are floating on the water is like, uh, they're that's made amazing. out of sheet that's copper. That's really beautiful. So did you just lay that in the bathtub to take that image? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> in fact. How fun. I, yeah. Okay. So the next image is a, a piece I did for um, Colin Lamb and his wife, who have Lamb's Grocery. Oh. And I started getting into glass fusing in the early 80s, and I was fortunate that I got, was kind of a pioneer in the technique. Um, if you go ahead and show, here's a copy of the book I wrote. This is the Fused Ooh. Glass Handbook. I wrote this book, and uh, go ahead and pull that image off. And uh, I wrote this book in 1986, I think. Uh, it's Basically, some people call it the fused glass Bible, that it's a really good introduction to all of the glass techniques. And uh, we did six printings. Go ahead and pull that image off if you want. And um, okay. it's, it's, it's a real good how-to. If you do all the projects in the books, you'll have a real good understanding of how to do fused glass. So it was an a art form that was in its infancy. And I was lucky to be part of that group that kind of initiated and That's did amazing. all of the research. Sure. And it's not often you get to develop a whole new art form. And then um, I, later I wrote, I used to do columns for um, the, uh, there we go, there's the Fused Glass Sandbook. I also did columns for Stained Glass News, and I put a bunch of those columns together in this kiln crafting book. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a synopsis of a bunch of little columns I did for that. So is this, is, is fused glass then something that you can like learn how to do by yourself just from a book? Or do you really need to be in a studio with somebody kind of showing you the you, tips? Now all of the information's out there. Okay. So if you have a kiln, access to a kiln, mm -hmm. um, and some fusible glass, the big trick is that the glass has to be compatible. When you melt two pieces of glass together, they have to be chemically matched, or one will contract more when it cools and crack apart. So they develop, there's all the lines of fusible glass you can buy and not have to worry about that. In the early days, we had to test everything and mm -hmm. develop our own. You, you got a lot of shards. 
A lot of shards. A lot of shards. You know the terminology. A lot terminology. of mosaic tabletops, right? <laughs> right. There you go. So I have a question. Is it the same kind of kiln that you use for ceramics? No. Okay. Good question. Ceramic kilns have the elements around the sides mm -hmm. as you're heating the mass, and they can go to higher temperatures because the heat is leaving the elements and going mm -hmm. up. In a glass fusing kiln, you want the elements in the lid, so you're heating the entire surface of the glass evenly because it expands when it heats. And if it expands unevenly, like in a ceramic kiln, the outside edges will expand and the glass will shatter. Having the elements in the lid causes it to heat evenly, and you can heat it up without breaking it. And it's got, so it's got a, um, it, oh, the whole thing closes up. It's not like a glass blowing where they stick it in and it's hot and they twist it around and then they bring it out and fiddle with it. Correct. Stick it back in. It's a different, it's an actual oven. It's an actual oven. Okay. It's a closed oven. Once you're above a thousand degrees, you can open the oven, the kiln, mm -hmm. and you can manipulate and shape and stuff as long as you keep it above a thousand degrees. But from a thousand degrees down the room temperature, that's when it's going through its cooling phase, mm -hmm. and that's a little tricky. Mm -hmm. So I've been fortunate. I've been able to do a lot of commission work with the kiln-fired glass. Mm -hmm. uh, the next image, if, uh, if he's got one, uh, number five is what I've got on my sheet. There we go. Ooh. This is a commission I did down in Albuquerque. It's for a Dell Webb uh, retirement center. <laughs> so all of those, and this is an unusual piece because it was Love designed, it. I worked with an architect in Denver. I flew to Kansas City to use the large furnaces to produce the pieces, and then it was installed in Albuquerque. Wow. The next one's a local piece. Now, this is in um, Rock of Ages out oh, here uh -huh. outside McMinnville. And they originally wanted stained glass windows um, to cover these. They wanted a grape theme. And I said, no, 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 you'll ruin your view. So I actually cast grapes out of glass and then had, uh, did some uh, forged metal work for the uh, vines and then did some cast glass leaves for that piece there. So you still have the view, but you still have the idea of the glass. So the, the bottom of, the, of that metal, is that's the view that we're actually seeing that's outside. Yeah, that's, you're seeing right oh, through the outside. Oh, okay, that's really pretty, yeah, I like it. So I try and do my commission work to relate to the environment. Mm -hmm. The good side of that, you get something that's very specific to the situation. The bad side is none of my work looks the same because it's all designed site specific. Well, that's art. It's in what form? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, for me, it's what works. In the next slide, you'll see a real difficult example. This is for a anesthesiologist's office. They, uh, that's what they do. They hire out to do uh, you know, hospitals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to find something that would relate to them. So this image is an isofluorine molecule that's been stylized because that's one of the anesthetics they use. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> You're getting sleepy, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they give you that little, they just count backwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the next image. This is uh, the Allison Hotel. This oh. is the piece I did, it's about oh. 20 feet wide. And I brought a sample as, as we're doing the project. A lot of it is building samples, trying different things. Mm. Um, so this is a piece of glass that I presented to the powers that be of my idea. Is I wanted to have some depth. The Allison has a whole a thing about the glacier that melted 10,000 years mm -hmm. ago and Lake Allison was formed. So I want to have a glacier type quality. In the next image you'll see here I'm, I did a wall inside my studio that duplicates the wall this would go on. Oh. So, and I replicated the lighting, and what I found is that the lighting, the shadows become as big a part of the design as the glasswork. So I was de designing with shadows and dimension, it was part of the theme. So here's the next image, go ahead. I did a mock-up out of cardboard, and then did the aluminum slats up there, and mm -hmm. then those aluminum slats were actually painted and taken to the hotel. In the next side, you can see here we are doing the installation. And you asked how we hang them. See those little chrome mm -hmm. areas? Those mm -hmm. are all little clips that the panels will attach onto. Okay. Uh, so it was quite the project. The next one is a detail. I framed it in cherry branches from a local orchard that I took down to a, a lumber yard, a lumber facility outside Grants Pass that does kiln dried timber, and I had them kiln dry the cherry branches so they wouldn't split and peel. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And they laughed at me, we were kiln drying twigs, you know? Yeah, that's for an art project. Yeah. And then the texture, um, I love the different textures. This one here, I took a bed of sand 
and rolled a pattern in it and set the glass on there and then the glass picks up that texture when it's uh, heated to a soft point. This is for a uh, custom home up in Portland. Uh, the next one is a project I did over in Dubai. Same concept. This is the kiln. We've got a 12 foot long kiln and wow. um, these panels are ended up being an inch thick. The next, pro next slide shows the finish. These are fins. We did 3,000 fins on the outside of this uh, apartment building on Fan Island. Oh my gosh. So it was like they brought me over as a consultant to work out all the engineering details and then I flew back to the US. And How did they even find you? The guy that runs the studio, I was teaching in Italy and he was one of my students, the guy that runs the students. How cool is that? And he <laughs> contacted me years later. Because I was fortunate because I was able to get in the ground floor of the fusing movement. I started teaching a lot of classes, and I've been able to teach classes all over the world, Australia, China, Japan, um, throughout the U.S. and Europe. And That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's fun. I'm glad I'm, that phase is over. You know, it's been a great ride. I had a dream back when I was first getting into glass that if I worked in it for 25 years, then the dialogue with the material would become effortless. And I kind of buy, okay, I'm just going to work with glass for 25 years. Well, it's been 50 years now, <laughs> and I still work with the material. Oh, the and has it become effortless? Yes, it becomes, it's always a challenge. It's always because glass has that, when it's hot, it's fluid and sensuous and soft and manipulable, uh, malleable. And then when it's cold, it's brittle and sharp and rigid. And it's that dance between the two. So it's just, you have to listen. If you, if you start getting cocky and going, oh man, I've got this down, I'm so good, the glass goes, oh yeah? And it just cracks and breaks, you know. You just have to be humble and get into it, respect the material and it, you get to I dance. Love that. Isn't it incredible to think that it started with you driving a school bus? Yeah, no. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy times, crazy yeah. times. So, so, like right now, what are you working on? So I just installed a metal sculpture at Grand Moraine Tasting Room outside Yamhill okay. um, last week, and that was a project I've been working on for several months, and I'm working on a new CD with T, uh, Steve Pinkston, the guy that did the theme song for this show. Okay. He's an incredible talent. In fact, I'm going to a production meeting when I get done here. So doing music, doing art, and trying to just Stay out of trouble, you know. Just rolling along, huh? Just rolling along. Wow. Now, do you show, do you do all commission, or do you show your work in galleries anywhere? I'm not a gallery artist. Okay. No, it's pretty much site-specific commissions. Mm -hmm. Okay. I design to the environment, and I try and take in as many touch points as I can so there's a real connection. The one I did for Grand Moraine, we're talking about topography and how soil's important and uh, the delicacy of the wines. And I've tried to capture all those in the, the sculpture so it has a real connection to the did site. You bring, did you bring a piece, a picture of it? I did not. You wow. have to go out to the tasting room. Well, there you go. Okay. We'll have an excuse. We'll right. go out. Let's go out there. We'll go tasting. <laughs> I'd, I'd love it. it. That'd I'd be love so much it. fun. Well, I really appreciate you being here today, Gil. And as always, the time just seems to go so quickly. But um, so if somebody wants you, are you... Are you taking commissions now? I am. Uh, GilReynolds.com okay. is my website. You can see some of my work there. And uh, that's probably the best way to get hold of me. Facebook. I'm also on Facebook. I know you are because I saw your post the other day. That was the music post. I oh, think. okay. Yeah, anyway. Well, thank you very much. And I'll uh, look forward to having a glass of wine with you. Perfect. Thanks so <laughs> thank much. You.